Hi everyone, um, welcome to today's little art nugget. Um, so for today I want to focus on The Way to Calvary um, by Jacopo um, Bassano. Now I know I may be butchering his name, I'm working on my Italian pronunciation so bear with me. Um, by Jacopo Bassano. It was, um, he painted it in 1554. This might have been an altarpiece. I think it was a, or it is an altarpiece. I think it might be a Paula, a single field altarpiece instead of a polyptic. Um, I think I'll do a different video on the differences between the two. So this, I think, is a Paula, um, which was created for church, most probably. So the scene shows the way to Calvary, Jesus carrying his cross on his way to the crucifixion. Now, what's really interesting is here we can see Jesus carrying his cross. And if we look up and zoom in, this is why I love the National Gallery's website. Here you see, um, here you see the site where Jesus is going to be crucified. So here you see little figures already standing. And you have the two other crosses with for the thieves who's being crucified with Jesus. And in the center, um, we have the space where Jesus will then put his cross and where, where he will die. So it's a little foreshadowing, showing the road that he is that he is taking on his way to be crucified. So in the picture, we have Jesus in the forefront. At the back, we have on the horses and the donkey, we think are the Pharisees and um um, the priests overseeing um, the event. We might have some Roman soldiers here, the one who's actually kind of pulling Jesus um, on his way on the road, and another Roman soldier with his shield. Here in the middle, we have the Marys who accompany Jesus. We have John the Evangelist um, throwing up his hands, kind of in protest. And to the right, we have um, the Virgin Mary weeping. But then here on the right hand side, we have a different figure who, if you're from a reformed tradition, at least like me, you might not even know about. So if you guess that this is the, the um, Mary Magdalene, um, I understand why you might think so because of the red. She's normally dressed in a red dress. But this is actually Saint Veronica. Now, St. Veronica has a very interesting tradition, which I just described below in the caption. Um, and she is known as the holder of um, uh, the image of Jesus or the true icon. So her name, she appears in the Gospel of Nicodemus, an extra biblical account. We have this, um, this narrative where Jesus is on his way um, to the crucifixion he stumbles which you see here and then um, Veronica who was um, a first century woman living in Jerusalem at the time was watching this scene and the procession saw Jesus stumble she rushed forward she took off her head covering and she gave it to Jesus to wipe his brow to wipe his face and when Jesus then wiped his face his image, his face, was transposed onto the cloth that he then gave back to Ger Veronica. So, in essence, Veronica becomes the holder of the true image of God, the first icon um, and the first relic, that, as the tradition goes. Um, so that's extremely interesting, especially if you look at um, iconography, the way icons function, um, um, and the history of that, super interesting. Um, so what, what is happening here um, is we have that little snippet of that, um, that narrative. And we see Jesus, we're not sure if he has already wiped his face on this cloth and is now looking at his image or if he is going to wipe his face and looking at a blank canvas. Either way, the cloth becomes a reflection of, of his own face and of his own, how can you say, fate, um, which, is, which he sees in this cloth. Um, um, what's interesting is that the cloth is not the only reflection within this image. Um, so if you look at Jesus's eyesight, 
yes, he is looking at his own reflection, but he is also looking at Veronica herself. She herself becomes a reflection for Jesus. Um, this is specifically in the way she's portrayed. So her body image kind of mirrors Jesus and reflects what he's doing with her hands and her her legs um, being situated kind of in the same way. But also we have, if you look at her head, we have, um, she's taken off her veil and she's showing us her hair. So her hair is braided in a circular pattern, very similar to the way Jesus, um, to the crown that Jesus has on his head, echoing the Jesus's crown. Then we also have her, the color of her dress. The red is very, very symbolic of the blood, which is dripping from, um, from his forehead where the crown pierces his skin. And also, if you look at his lips, they seem to be really blooded and it, bloodied and it looks like he's already been beaten. Um, um, but what's the most interesting to me is, um, is her dress. So if you look at her dress, um, especially the way that it's crumpled up and lifted, showing her undergarments, um, um, we see within her petticoat these slits that are made. So these slits could echo or echoes, reflects um, the lacerations which Jesus would have, would have received when he was being flogged. Um, or whipped they make these long left lacerations where the leather has dug into the skin and ripped out the skin and this is exactly echoed in her petticoat um, another wound that this could be reflecting is at the moment of Jesus's death when he is pierced with the spear in his side to see whether he is actually dead um, the opening um, could also reflect that opening in his side. And it could also reflect the stigmata wounds on his hands and feet that um, we that we see, that that could reflect. Um, so in, an, in essence, Veronica not only is the holder of the true image or the true icon of Jesus, but she herself becomes a reflection of Jesus' image through her clothes and her wounds. This is specifically interesting because as a first century woman kneeling in the ground, interacting with a convicted criminal who is being crucified, which is extremely humiliating, um, says a lot. And what I want to leave you with is thinking about how you can relate with Veronica as an image of Jesus. How do we mirror Jesus's portrayal? Would we also uncover our head, kneel in the ground, bring shame upon ourselves to interact with someone who is going through suffering um, and and reach out to them? Um, uh, do we reflect the wounds of society? Do we become an image of Jesus himself? Do we share in his and reflect his love? and his acceptance that he preached um, in his ministry. So specifically with the Veronica image and the way that the reflection is being played upon within this artwork, um, from a theological perspective, when looking at the image, try and think about what the image of God, of Jesus reflects and how we ourselves are asked to be a reflection of him as well.